Welcome to the KJ and the Podcast with your hosts, Kurt and Jacob, two servants of Christ armed with the Sword of God, the King James Bible, a microphone, and biblical solutions for modern worldly problems. Today, we have another very special guest. So sit back, grab your Bible, and let's dive into the Word of God. Hi, and welcome to another episode of KJ and the with your host, Kurt, and myself, Jacob. Today, we have another uh, special guest, another missionary, uh, Brother David Merlo. He's a missionary to Argentina. Brother Merlo, how are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Saved in all my way to heaven. Amen. 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 Doing great. So, um, as, as we just mentioned, you're, you're a missionary to Argentina. You're, you're a guest speaker here at our church today. Um, but let's, let's get to know you a little bit. So, where are you from, and, and you know, what church are you out of from? Sure. So I was uh, born in Missouri. Um, my parents kind of moved all over as a child. So I lived in Washington State, lived in the state of New Mexico, lived in Oklahoma. And then when I was eight, my parents uh, went to the mission field of Argentina. So I was raised on the mission field. Um, and I loved it. I loved growing up on the mission field. Um, I really uh, feel like it was a blessing from the Lord. Um, sometimes people ask me, do you feel like you missed out on anything being raised in Argentina? And I say, no, it was a blessing. I enjoyed my childhood and would go outside and play. And, um, that's really, um, one of the the best memories I have is just making friends outside and, uh, learning the language, making mistakes. Um, but then once I picked up the language, people didn't even know I wasn't from there. Wow. So you adapted really quick. Adapted really really quick. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, I bet you missed out on a lot, but it's a good thing that you missed out on a lot. There's a lot of the world here in the States that probably you didn't have to be a part of. Yes, sir. Yes. So it it was nice, but at the same time, it felt a little awkward and I would come back here because technology advanced so quick here and I wasn't up to date on the latest technology or even on the latest movies. We were a a couple years behind you Mm. guys. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Brother Merlo, would you mind sharing with us your, your testimony of your salvation? Sure. So, um, obviously, growing up in a Christian home, I uh, heard about Jesus ever since I was could remember. And I heard that I needed to be forgiven of my sins, needed to put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I did that um, as a young boy. But I deep down inside, I knew that I wasn't uh, sincere. Mm-hmm. I was doing it more because this is what I'm told to do. Uh, But I was always afraid of dying. And so as most people raised in a Christian home, I said the prayer several times. Uh Uh, But finally one year at church camp when I was 12 in Lake Texoma, so here in Texas. Wow. um, The preacher drew a, a picture of heaven and just showed how wonderful heaven was. Described the streets of gold and what a wonderful place it would be. And then he drew hell underneath. And that moment I knew for sure I wasn't saved. Wow. And um, he gave the invitation. And I was teary-eyed, kind of embarrassed to go forward because I'm the missionary kid. And that's what everybody expects me to be saved at 12. Right, right. And I'm thankful that I had a friend named Zach who grabbed me by the hand and said, man, you need to go pray. And so that night I settled it and... Ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins. Hey, Amen. Praise the Lord, He did. Hey, Amen. And uh, life has never been the same. That's fantastic. Wow. That is amazing. So, I was, I was similar story. I was at, I was at church camp on the other side of Lake Texoma. Okay. And uh, seventeen years old, grew up, grew up in this church. Okay. And I knew how to go to church really well, and I, you know, I went through the motions. I wanted that paperback Bible really bad. But they okay. were given out in one of the classrooms or whatever. I just wanted to be part of it. So I completely understand the nerves of everybody expecting you to be safe and, yes. and not wanting to come forward. So, you know, God is good. Hey, Amen. And when he gives us the power to come forward and to finally submit ourselves to God. Amen. And and speaking of submitting, you obviously you're a missionary. You're a man of God. Mm-hmm. How did that come about? So I knew I was going to go to Bible college. Uh, but my mind, I was just going to go for one year. Um, then do something else. I wasn't for sure what. Well, after going for one year, the Lord really dealt with me about being in the ministry. Um, but I wasn't really convinced yet to go to Argentina. In my mind, I was going to stay here, help out at a church, be an assistant pastor. 
Um, and that's exactly what happened. I graduated uh, in 2007, got married 2007. Um, and in 2009, my family moved to West Texas to Odessa. And we did an internship, kind of two-year internship as assistant pastor. And it was during that time that God really began dealing with me about missions. Um, I was reading a book uh, on church planning by Bud Calvert. And one of the questions he asked in the book is, why haven't you considered going back to where you were raised? Hmm. And so, like, immediately, God just began dealing with me. You know, why haven't you considered going back to Argentina? You know the language. You have your paperwork. Your wife is from there. Uh, they need the gospel too, and you can tell them about me. And so uh, then in my Bible reading, Romans in chapter number 10 and verse 14, how shall they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. And that just really confirmed it for me. So this was in May of 2011. And by September 2011, we began traveling to raise support to go to Argentina. And by May of 2013, we were on the mission field. So it was it was the word of God yes, that sir. pushed you into this, not that Odessa Permian mojo. No, not the Odessa Permian mojo. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Amen. God is, of course, God is good all the time. Amen. God Amen. is all powerful, and just to hear what He's done in your life and, and the souls that I'm sure the many souls you've touched in, in Argentina. How 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 has your ministry grown since you've been there? So when we um, Got there in 2013. We worked with my parents for a couple of years. And then the Lord showed us where he wanted us to go in Argentina. And we moved to Bahia Blanca, city of 350,000 people. Very Catholic. Um, a lot of uh, Pentecostals in our area. And um, we're the only Baptist church. So at first it was awkward because people weren't familiar with us. Um but slowly, God began to give us contacts, and he began to uh, allow us opportunities to show people who we were. And after about a year, people began to trust us because we didn't just open our doors and shut down. We actually stayed. And so we, we have about 40 people. Um, that would be Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Our biggest service in Argentina is the PM service. Wow. So they like to sleep in on Sundays. Of course, I think everybody does. But wow. the American culture is go to church Sunday morning, and then Sunday night, yeah. you'll just have those faithful. Right. Well, there is the opposite. You'll have the faithful Sunday morning and Sunday night. Wow. And That's then if you have any visitors, it's going to be Sunday night instead of Sunday morning. How long wow. did it take to get used to that? Um, it wasn't that hard, seeing that I grew up there. Okay, I right, kind of right. already knew how it worked. Um, but now being, since I was the pastor, uh, I expected everybody to be there Sunday morning too. <laughs> <laughs> right, and right, so right. it was, it was difficult at first. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to, to ask, um, if you had any biblical advice, you know, especially you have a, a unique perspective, uh, being in, in that uh, part of the world and also here in, in the United States, if you would have any unique biblical advice to give uh, American churches or churches here in America just based on your perspective uh, what, what would that be? Um, as far as biblical advice in what area? Uh, in the area of uh, soul winning in the area of prayer Bible reading Sure I would uh, I would just encourage you never give up mm -hmm. um, you know and to do what God has called you to do. You know, he's mm -hmm. called us all to, to soul win. Mm -hmm. And many times God doesn't allow you to see the person or to see those people who you handed a track to get saved. But it seems like God brings other people just yes. from you being faithful yes. And, yes. and soul winning. Yes, yes. yes. And yes. so keep on, keep on soul winning. Amen. And uh, don't be interested or concerned about the numbers. Oh, Leave it amen. up to God. Amen. amen. And just keep on praying for the lost. Mm -hmm. um, my wife did not grow up in a Christian home mm -hmm. and her and her mom were the first ones saved Amen. at the age of 15 Amen. Amen. and uh, her dad was very stubborn mm -hmm. and didn't want to have anything to do with church and uh, they prayed for her dad for several years they prayed for five years before her dad trusted Christ as Savior Amen. so I would, I would encourage you to just keep on praying for that person 
and keep on living the life God wants you to be. Amen. Uh, because her dad came to know the Lord because of the evidence he saw in my wife and in his wife's life. Mm. So people are watching you. Amen. No matter if you think they are or not, people are Your watching you. Your life is a testimony. Absolutely. Your life is a testimony. Life is a testimony. Amen. That is wonderful. Amen. And hey, you sound you sound a lot like one of the most common missionaries that we're all very familiar with. He wrote most of, most of the New Testament. Pray without ceasing. Yeah. It's exactly it's exactly what I'm hearing, and it's definitely something. Every time I see something that says that in Paul's writings, or or even that pops up that's similar, it, it, it it's home every time because. Yeah, I pray often, but I don't pray enough. Well, we can. I don't think I can ever talk to God enough. Sure, prayer is, is one of those things that uh, you can never have enough of. And you can always pray more. Um, so just always be in an attitude of prayer. And remember, God is always available 24-7, no matter what you're facing. Yeah, time. Time is not is a construct for us to, mm-hmm. to help understand, but... It's, it's a little bit different for God. Yeah, he's always available. Amen. 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 I was just looking at this uh, passage of scripture in 1 Peter 2, the 15th verse. It says, For so in the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. And so with well-doing, with, with people seeing, because like you said, people are watching you. And when they see the blessings of God in, in, in your life, then then you, you put to silence, hey, God, God must be real. Look what He's doing in in the, in the lives of, of these people that I know. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Absolutely. I, well, that that kind of brings up you know something that that I observe and I have heard a lot. And even when, even though I was saved as a teenager, and I'm active in church now and into my mid to late thirties, um, you know, I, I, I submitted myself back to God. However, there was a time where I was I was I was fairly backslidden, and I have this phrase just. A worldly phrase going through my head is, well, I can be successful without God. I can do these things without God. And sometimes it's hard to differentiate the success of the worldly and the success the success of, of the Christian. So for, for those worldly people that, that could possibly be listening that, that don't have both feet in, in the church or, or with God in their Bible, what would you tell to them to, to yeah, yeah, they may be successful, they may be doing it on their own, but what would be your advice for that person? Well, I think uh, in life in general, we need God. Uh, we can do things in our flesh. God God allows us to do certain things in our flesh. But even if you look at the ministry of the Apostle Paul, and you can go to Second or First Thessalonians in chapter 5, one of the things he asked the brethren is for prayer. Yes. He says, brethren, pray for us. Right. Mm-hmm. So in order for Paul to be successful in the, the ministry, he needed the power of God upon his life. Amen. Yes, and he knew that he needed people to pray for them. Mm-hmm. Now, we can do things in our own strengths, but if we're going to be successful in the ministry and in the Lord's work, we must have the Lord. Amen. Um, and if we're going to come to repentance of our sins, mm-hmm. then we must realize that we're not strong enough to do it. Right. We, we need Jesus Christ to give us that strength to humble ourselves because as humans, we're prideful. Mm-hmm. And we, yes. need, we need the Lord's help to... Swallow our pride, yes, and to say yes, Lord, I'll I'll accept you as Lord and Savior. Amen. Yeah, Amen. and you know, I, I did find myself, and I'm sure there's others out there as well that, you know, I, I was attempting to lay treasures for myself here upon this world, on this earth. Mm-hmm. And I was not concerned at that point in my life with laying treasures up for myself in heaven, and it finally took you know the Word of God to to bring me back. Say it is there's something more than myself. It is to lay those treasures up in heaven mm-hmm. and to build to build a better kingdom and to honor God who who died for me. Who am I? Right. I have done nothing right. to even compare to, to be forgiven of one of my sins, let alone right. all the sins I've ever done, ha- am doing, or ever will do. I don't deserve any of that. Who, who am I to be deserving of such a wonderful, loving God? I'm not. Amen. But I'm, I'm grateful that I am. Amen. And you hit upon that, uh, talking about pride. Uh, Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And so that is a, a, a problem. Even with Bible-believing Christians, sometimes we can be uh, full of pride, and we can go out. It is possible to go soul-winning in the flesh, because you think it's you're going to win that person to Christ instead of the Holy Spirit of God winning that mm-hmm. person to Christ. So uh, that's a very good point that you made about about pride earlier. 
Absolutely. Praise the Lord. And going back to what you just said, you know, none of us deserve to be saved. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we are seen in Scripture that shows the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. God is merciful. Mm -hmm. And no matter how far away we get from Him, or no matter how bad our life may seem, if we are simply willing to repent of that sin, He's merciful and He's forgiving. Amen. And He's willing to accept us into His family. Amen. Even though we don't deserve it, because nobody does. Not even the best of best. That's right. But that's the God we serve, that He doesn't show favorites. He, he uh, His love is unlimited. To whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. So, that's, a, that's a perfect segue into um, something that we really try to discuss on every show um, thus far and, and want to continue doing is everyone's got a different approach for leading someone to Christ. So if a lost person was talking to you right now and said, I want to get saved, what would you tell them? Well, first, you would have to, you would get them to see their sin. Yes. You know, we have broken God's law. Yes. Uh, and many times we think we haven't. But if you were to judge yourself just on the Ten Commandments, we would see very quickly that we're guilty. And in Romans 10, or, or Romans 3 and 10, it says, For there are none righteous, no, not one. So no matter how good a person we are, we've broken God's law. Yes. So we were offended a holy and a righteous God. Mm-hmm. But God has paid the price for us. He loved us so much that he died in our place because what we deserve because of our sin is death. Yes. That's yes. what we deserve. Right. And God in his love sent his son to die in our place, and we need to repent and put our faith in him. Amen. Amen. And he's willing to forgive. For if we're, uh, I can't remember exactly the passage, but it talks about that if we're um, willing to call upon him and repent of our sins, he's willing to He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Amen. First John 1 John 1.9. Yes, sir. Amen. Our walking Bible encyclopedia over here is Kurt. Appreciate the help. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Bible verse or passage? Um, you know, I would I would clean back to Romans, uh, Romans 10 mm-hmm. and verse 14, because that's the verse that God used to call me, how shall they hear Amen. without a preacher? That's powerful. See, that's one of the verses that just keeps me going when I'm down. Um, keeps me preaching the word of God. Uh, there's people that need someone to be a witness. Yes, hey, amen. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, and our everyday walk is a witness. You know, however we can reach the world, and we we've got so many different ways. We have podcasts, we have tracks, we have door hangers, uh, we've got online church for those that cannot leave because forsake yourselves not. You do need to go to church. But for those that can't get out of the house, of course, we have online church. Uh, we have so many resources for the world today to know Christ. So, unfortunately, there's there's not an excuse to not know God, to not know Jesus, and to have Jesus in your heart and go to heaven. And it, it, I feel bad for those, and I pray for those that, that don't have Jesus. And, well, and in Psalms, it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. So even the heavens, you can know there's a God, yeah. and there's no excuse. Yeah. No excuse. Amen. Well, that's that's it, and uh, brother brother Merlot, we do appreciate everything that you do for for us and coming to visit and, sure. and uh, you know telling us who you are and what you do, uh, telling us your testimony. We appreciate that. Amen. Um, we appreciate anybody who's a man of God mm-hmm. and is out there to save souls Amen. and make the world a better place through Jesus. Amen. That's what it's all about. Yes, and I, sure. I love you and I appreciate you for that. Um, we do. Uh, so again, just uh, give you some of your contact information here. I got. Merlot A David eighty four. That's M E R L O A D A V I D eighty four at gmail dot com. He's at a Southwest Baptist Church in Oklahoma City, and he's a missionary to Argentina. And I know I know the South American people, the Argentinians, are better for you. We mm-hmm. love you and appreciate everything you do. We'll continue to pray for you, and Amen. we ask our audience that they pray for you as well and your family. Amen. And hopefully y'all can return home soon. Amen. And see your Amen. church. I know I know you miss them and I know they miss you as well. Amen. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Anything Amen. else? No. All right. Um, Brother Moore, would you like to take us out in, in prayer? Yes, sir. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this time to have this conversation. Lord, thank you so much for who you are. Thankful that your mercies are new every morning. 
And Lord, we're just thankful that you love us no matter, uh, despite our sin, Lord, you still love us and you're still willing to forgive us of our sins and you're still willing to accept us into your family. Lord, mm-hmm. if there's someone here today that is listening, yes. that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, may yes. today be the day of salvation. Yes. Lord, would they not put that off one more day, mm-hmm. but would they call upon you as Lord and Savior? Mm-hmm. Lord, thank you for this time. We pray that you would watch over us, protect us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Amen. Amen. And again, if, uh, if you do have questions on salvation or anything else, please feel free to give us a contact. Uh, Our information is in the About page. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in to today's edition of KJ and Lee. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email us at kjandlee at gmail.com or send us a message on anchor.fm forward slash kj-lee. And a special thank you to the Abbott family and Reach Ministries for their music used on this podcast. We hope you have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time.